Saturday morning about 7.30 a.m. and we're minutes away from picking our first module for the Hersic. Here we are. The cradle or the strong back assembly is coming off the ground. Nice and slow, well controlled. Get position for the guys up on the number four, number five column line on the boiler to get ready for the tags so they can orientate this module the way it needs to be once it is in the air. What's happening now is what they what we call uh, the uprighting of the module in the frame. The module goes from flat or horizontal orientation through a 90 degree rotation to the point of where it's standing straight on end as it would in the boiler. We're a little closer to the operation now. We're actually starting to swing the short crane back around so they can completely upright the base of the sled. It's a slow process because it requires finite control. In about three to five minutes, if not less, we should have our bundle in the upright position. And at that time, they'll position people in the JLGs as they swing this bundle around to break away the actual bundle from the strong back that was welded in there yesterday to complete this pick. Start to pick the module actually out of the cradle assembly. Keep in mind the big crane, the Maxer crane, is the one involved with actually taking the weight of the module and moving the module into the boiler. As soon as the module's out of the cradle assembly, the two smaller cranes, the 777 and the other 2250, will set the slider, the strong back, down on the ground in the horizontal position. And slow but sure, we're getting this module out of the strong back. Now there's workers or spotters. If you look to your immediate left by the module head, it's kind of hard to see that are spotting this module as it's coming out, in addition to two or three spotters on tag lines at the base of this module, which are uh, acting as a tail control uh, to prevent this module from running into or interfering with the actual frame itself, uh, the strong back frame. Well, we're minutes away from having our first Hershik module out of the strong back assembly and ready to swing into position to be placed in the boiler. It's important to see that we've got a number of safety people, trades people, and base electric people around the perimeter of this, preventing unauthorized access while this heavy lift is occurring. In about a matter of 13 minutes, the module went from being inside of the strong rack assembly to being completely removed from the strong back assembly. Now once this module is out of here, or out of the strong back assembly completely, that's some reconfiguration of position of the cranes, the 777 and the short boom 2250 will have to take place so the actual module itself can swing 100, or the crane carrying, carrying the module can swing 180 degrees actually miss the triple seven grade boom with the module and successfully make it into the boiler. Being right above the area in the boiler we need to be in with this module. The guys are working working hard on pulling those tags in order to get this bundle aligned to fit through what's known as the moment beams or roof beams that actually support these modules. The opening is a tight tolerance to actually get these modules through and if you look at the bottom of those modules, those are actually nozzles for the individual, I mean, if you want to call them partitions in these modules for each water slash steam circuit, in this case high pressure to steam circuit. And those protrude through the floor 
of this HERSIG, so the alignment of these modules is critical. A little hard to see right now, but unlike the conventional coal-fired boilers that are in the cooperative, you can, this boiler is a little different in its, I guess, construction, geometry, and other aspects. If you look kind of right there, it's not like your typical boiler wall. It consists of boiler tubes. It's actually a stainless steel liner plate. Most of your heat transfer actually occurs within the bundle itself. It's not, although it, it is a natural circulation boiler, the heat transfer surfaces or are in the modules. And each of these modules, the circuits that are in the modules, contain fins on the surface of the tubes where in the conventional style boilers the tubes are just a bare metal surface. So to optimize the tra heat transfer of these units, uh, each one of these bundles are fitted with a large number of fins. Now the stainless steel plate known as a liner plate that runs through this boiler actually stops, and it's hard to see, but this expanded section right here, which contains the CO grid and the SCR grid, which is our NOx control. Beyond that, the cold end of this boiler is carbon steel plate, and in, in the next few minutes, we'll get an inside view of this boiler as the module is being set down into place. We'll see the burners, the locking bars, and uh, bunch of other parts of the boiler that are different from the standard uh, conventional coal-fired boilers that are in the rest of the cooperative. About a third of the way through of getting this module installed into the boiler, it's easier to see the nozzles we were talking about earlier at the base of this module. Notice throughout the area in this boiler there's actually burners in here and they help when we're not getting the exhaust gas temperature from the turbine we need. It kicks the VT rate up which then gives us those extra megawatts as far as uh, making steam temperature. Uh, each one of those burner rows is segregated by blocking runners which actually diverts the flame, or I should say the flame, the uh, exhaust gas flow through the actual burner areas. We were talking a little bit earlier about these stainless steel liner plates on the walls. They're actually uh, not a heat transfer surface, but more an insulating surface. And if you look, it's kind of hard to see with my big finger. About the center line of my finger, all that is actually insulation. And that, of course, is not only for safety, but to keep the heat in the boiler. On the back side of the boiler, you can see the difference in color of those liner plates. Those are actually carbon steel which we've got a lower temperature in the back, we've got lower flow, a lot of our pressure drop occurs across the front part of this boiler. So we don't need the noble material as we would in the back, plus it saves on the overall cost of this unit. Halfway through and under five minutes with the installation of this module. Number three reheater, number three and four superheater. Manitowoc Max or Crane, 240 feet of boom, 500 ton rating. 100% in. What a great feeling, isn't it? Yeah.